It's always frustrating when a new model comes out and improves things just a little bit. And of course you bought last year's model. Today we're gonna try to address some of that, at least one item on the 2021 and older 1025Rs. We're gonna upgrade it, the rear fender that is, to just like the new ones, the 22 and 23 models. Let's get started. Now this episode's not gonna do a full upgrade from a 2021 model to a 23 model. And the biggest difference there, the biggest difference overall is the single point connector, which is standard on the 23 models. That just came along in 23. The fender that we're gonna work on today came along in 22. Now the single point connector, you can get the same function already, right? You can get that as an upgrade from deer. We're gonna focus on the fender and this corresponding console. The console is really what we're all about. We're trying to get these four knockouts for switches so that you can, you might call them upfitter switches, I guess. Um, we're gonna put our Summit hydraulic switches in there and remove the switch panel here, right? Hopefully we can get these four switches to fit right in here. We'll be able to get rid of this uh, bar that sticks out here and just make it look a lot nicer. When I first considered this, I thought, oh my goodness, I have to buy a fender. This will cost a lot. Well, I guess you can't get one just like this, right? This one's got the Johnny X decals on it. I've already upgraded it with that. Yours will be green like this, but both these pieces together are less than $100. Now we got a kit together on greenparkstore.com slash TTWT, which is these two pieces, as well as four blank knockout pieces to go in here. So if you wanna do the upgrade kit, you can just get it right there, greenpartstore.com slash TTWT and use code TTWT, you get free shipping. But I was shocked, I think this is $38 or something. I just bought a Fender for the 3520 and it was over $300. So maybe you ought to buy these by the boatload. This is not gonna be trivial, but it's straightforward. We've done it before when we put a Power Beyond kit on. Thankfully, it is the right side fender. It's not the fuel tank side, so this shouldn't be too bad. I'm gonna start by taking off this toolbox. I really wouldn't have to do that, but I think the visibility is gonna be much better for me and for you. I've got a little more stuff, obviously, to take off than, than some of you will if you're making this upgrade. I've um, got the wiring here for the auto steer. Of course, I've got this bracket for the summit kit. If you're putting your summit kit on for the first time, you won't have that bracket yet. Now with all the stuff I've done, this bracket's actually been pretty interesting. I, I've used it for several items. I've used it for cameras. I've used it for uh, the uh, laser receiving equipment. So I probably won't be able to wean myself of the bracket entirely. But at least for the Summit kit, it won't be necessary after this if all goes well. Take this light off right here. Yeah, I forgot about this. This is probably the worst aspect of wheel weights. If you're considering wheel weights, this is, this is the worst thing I can think about them, is that I have to take them off every time I need to take the rear wheel off. And for one of these little tractors, taking the rear wheel off is not unusual. It makes it a lot easier to get to everything around. So, yep, gotta take the wheel weight off. And unfortunately, that means I have to get the backer wrench in there, it looks like. No fun. Looks like I'm gonna be able to hold this one with my fingers. This is the 50 pounder. You can get the 72 pound, I believe, starter weight instead of just the 50 pounder. I have it on my other 1025R. Remember, they're filled with rim guard. Bad news is they're heavy for this project, but the good news is they'll stand up. The two hardest places to understand is removing this handle. 
it's a 13 millimeter and it's way up in here. Well, I think it's 13 millimeter. There we go. But that handle has to come off to be able to get this uh, console piece off. And so goes the handle. I don't have a handle on that anymore. This one's a little more obvious. It's right at the base of this pocket here. So I think I'm ready to come off with this console. Here we go, we got this challenge here of getting over this. I, I can't seem to pull this off. And to be honest, if I get it to where it comes off easily, I don't think I'd like that either. So I'm gonna try to just pry this apart with my Nipex and slide it right over the top, just like that. This is the bolt that is in the, the, you know, the base of this cubby here that goes through the fender. Well, I didn't put a backer on it. I just put the wrench on it and spun it right out. And I'm like, ah, oh, it came out, no problem. Then I realized that I've actually broke it off here. I broke the fender. So make sure you put a backer wrench on this lock nut here under the fender. Otherwise you'll tear up your fender. Now it's not a problem to me, I'm putting a new fender on anyway. But if I weren't, that has risk of not going well at all. Okay, this is the accessory lights here. And at first I thought I had a problem here, but it turns out it's just taped. It's just taped right over the top there to kind of hold it in. I like that concept. I'm going to repeat that on my new console. Then it comes right out. Now I suppose if anyone has a 1023E and is nearby and would like this console to make a pseudo 1025R, you're welcome to have it. I'm not going to ship it anywhere, but first guy that wants it can have it. I can tell by my new fender that I've got two bolts to take out here and one back here. And then if I remember right from our Power Beyond video, this was still not easy to get off. It's a little hard to get that fender out of there and I had to get my camera crew's help to uh, get it so we didn't get it on video. But the biggest challenge is getting this out from under the floorboard. So, and I put a little scratch in here, so I'm a little concerned about going back on, Christy. Yeah. This bolt here. Now, Christy, maybe you can come over and help me and we can see if we can get this on, maybe around here where you were before. Okay. I think getting those right back under there. Well, we've got it in the appropriate bind. Yep. There's a lot of give in the plastic of the fender. Hey, I think we're, we're making starting. progress. There's a bolt and it needs to go. It's the lock. Oh, yep. There it goes. Yep. Now it looks like the black piece is not lined up correctly. Like it's uh, it's caught out of the... Yeah, and it's still, there we go. We're basically on. Yeah. Just like the old one, including lube shuttle right there. By the way, I think it's the best grease gun you can buy because it uses that different tube. So lube-shuttle.us, use code TTWT for a 5% discount. So I'll put a couple of bolts in here. These are the easy ones. I'll not tighten them very much. Okay, this is the wiring that's gotta go back in the console before we put it on. Two different wires here, one for the light and one for the, I'm gonna call it the cigarette lighter, the auxiliary plug. But that's not all that's gonna go in there. So I may kind of set it here. And make sure it's gonna fit on. Oh, I'll have to put it over the three-point lever. But before I get too excited about that, we need to take apart the summit panel, this little box here, and see if we can get those toggle switches put in here. Well, that's easy enough. These Nipex seem to be a good tool for this. I'm able to squeeze both ends of this at the same time, hopefully, and get them just to slide out of there. Now they had a nice O-ring seal here. 
I hope I can salvage that because I don't have any more of them. Mine's been here a year and a half, something like that. So, you know, this is not new by any means. It's not trivial to get that out of there. Yellow, purple, and red in the middle. Yellow on one end. Purple on the other. And red in the middle. Put that toggle right in here. I'll not put it in there permanently yet. Okay, and then the next one down. It's going to be hard to see in a photo. Orange and blue and red in the middle. Looks like you got a mess there. It looks like a mess, doesn't it? It's not as bad as it looks, like most electrical things. Um, mine's early. Uh, it is a prototype, actually, on this tractor. So I've got a bunch of extra cable here, and I don't really know. There's nothing I can do, I don't think, with this extra cable unless I were to cut it off and get a new end and put on there. So that'll have to remain outside. There's not enough room in this new cubby to put that inside, I don't believe. But the rest of this, I think, will fit in that cubby. There's a little slot here. It looks like things are supposed to go in. Yeah, I had problems last time putting in the just the two wires, let alone all this extra. And this is a big wire. As you can see, it's got like that two power wires, power and ground, and then I'll have eight control wires. Yeah. So where do I start? I probably start by going ahead and plugging them in back into their switches here. I need one of these grounds in the middle on each switch. I gotta plug it up through here though. Oh, don't, for, don't forget that, Tim. I hope there's enough space there for those. Pretty short runs. I'm gonna go ahead and insert these switches. And now I know exactly what I have to do. They're gonna look really nice. Look at that. Assuming we can get them wired here. And then I'm gonna be able to turn this over and work more freely here. I can worry about the extra cable later since I have plenty. So let's, let's go to work on actually making these connections. So last time I found it really hard to get all these wires to remain tucked in here. Um, and so I'm afraid I'll have that same challenge again. Maybe if I help hold. First thing I've got to do is get it over this handle here. Got to go backwards. There we go. Now we're over that. Gently down. Okay, this will have to... That's actually looking remarkably good. It looks like it could go... Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not meant to go down. Yeah, it's supposed to go down a little more, but that's the problem. And then I've got one right over the bolt hole here. Okay, it's not really down good, but it may be about as good as I'm going to get it. Because it's... There's a lot of wire in there. That's the challenge. We'll see if it's good enough. I see the uh, handle hole here. It's not perfectly lined up. That's something that was movable when I had it in there. That's why we're working I on just it. Moved it. Oh, oh, yeah, you moved it good. Yeah. It's still not quite right, but it's closer, and I might be able to see it from above here now. Mm, my screwdriver doesn't fit. It's up in there. Yeah, it is. Um, needs to go a little further. Wiggle it. Did it do it? Yeah. By far the hardest part of this project is removing the handle and even more so getting it back on. There's just hardly enough threads for us to reach, uh, and that's with two of us. Christy was under here pushing the bolt up, and I was trying to, yeah, it was, it was not easy to get that handle on. But hey, I, I sort of like the look. I say sort of because this is not down really good back here, but I think it's, I think it's gonna be pretty good. It's time to put the light back on.
Okay. Okay, now I plug in the light. Maybe I should have plugged it in before I put it on, but. Now the good news is if you have a 22 or 23 or later model, 1025R, you already have the knockouts here. You won't have to replace the fender. So it might be a little bit easier. You'll still have to take off the rear wheel, I believe, to be able to get the handle off and get this console cover off. But it'll be a little bit easier. The fender was somewhat of a challenge. Unfortunately, it won't be a lot easier. I don't see any way to do this without taking that console up. You might not have to take it all the way off, but you have to get it up here so that you can get those wires under there. Just don't see any other approach. Now, taking a little bit of a risk here, I did not test any of these switches before I put all this cover back on. And maybe I should do so. I, there, there's really one risk. Uh, there's no risk that the little spade connectors didn't get attached, but the one risk could be that one of the hot wires is touching one of the grounds. I had to bend those spade connectors just a little bit. So that is one risk, and it's probably enough of a risk that I should try that before I go any further. So I don't really have to test the hydraulics. I just have to test to make sure that these valves are clicking, engaging when it's got a, uh, electrical power put to it. And every one of them is clicking something. I, given that there's four of them here in proximity, I'm having trouble feeling for sure which one is which. So I may have to sort through that later. The good news is I can sort through it. Well, I guess I can sort through it on this end. They are so nicely sorted here. Oh, and I could have seen it here. The green and the reds right here. Eh, oh, well. It'll be interesting if I have them all hooked up backwards. Now, if I'm just backwards this direction, I can, I can swap them. But if I decide I want to go to different valves, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, this is the one that has a backer. It isn't the big cavity in the back. It's this one. And when you're loosening, make sure you use the backer there so you don't tear up the uh, fender. This one back here doesn't have a backer. They don't need to be crazy tight, it's just snug, especially the ones that have lock nuts. Okay, do I have anything else to hook up? Well, I'm missing a tire. Uh-oh, there's my other seal. Shoot, I don't know if I could get that out and put that seal in now or not. It's probably not going to matter that much. It's hard to do things perfectly. That pretty much covers it for upgrading the fender in this case and the console to uh, support these toggle switches. I think this is a nice upgrade for $100 or less. This is, you know, it's, it's within range, right? And so I'm, I'm excited about that. Greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT for this. Now, if you've got a prior to 23 model, you'll need to add the single point connector and that's really all you'll need to, to bring it up to date with, with everything you see between 2020 and 2023. So prior to 2020, there's some other changes. I've talked about putting together a list of all the changes that I can remember and even getting some help from you guys, but I haven't done it so far. Uh, I probably need to. Of all the changes that have occurred in the 1025R line, there's, there's been a lot of them and some of them are, are subtle over the years. But the big changes were in 2020 where they went to the new mower deck and then in 23 where they went to the single point connector all being integrated. At least if you buy a factory installed loader. Hope you guys have found this useful. This is, this is the kind of upgrade I think that's fun and, and provides some value for certain customers. If you're getting the Summit kit, you don't have to have that big lever there. These will all integrate nicely into your side panel and look like it was made that way. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and you will be proved a liar. That's right, you come over and you wanna be scratched. I'll scratch you. Especially if you let me talk a little gruffer like that. Still stay around. You're getting there. You're getting better. 
we'll get you tamed down here at some point. Yeah, we'll get you where you're not such a scaredy cat. Now, Bo, we don't have to worry about you being a scaredy cat. But Arrow here, he likes to fly like an arrow. Or she, I guess that's a she. 